I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You're about to hear the world premiere of The Human Experiment by Mfaniso Udofia. The Human Experiment is part of Playing On Air's Wordsmith Duo, supported by the Axe Houghton Foundation. The Wordsmith Duo commissions two playwrights to each write their own play, but to create pieces that particularly resonate when heard together. The Human Experiment's partner play, Jacob and Amal by Deepika Guha, takes place 30 years after today's piece. Both can be accessed on our website or podcast. Udofia's plays have been produced widely. As a TV writer, her work includes Netflix's 13 Reasons Why and Amazon's A League of Their Own. Logan Vaughn directs A Human Experiment, having directed productions at MCC Theatre and Barrington Stage Company and many more. Her cast features Adepero Oduye, acclaimed for her work in the independent film Pariah and in 12 Years a Slave, and in her Broadway debut of The Trip to Bountiful. She is joined by Alex Obukudam, active with the Upright Citizens Brigade, ACT in San Francisco, and many regional and New York stages, as well as Kaylin Coleman, who too has brightened many regional and off-Broadway theaters. You can hear her in POA's Owner Occupy on our website or podcast. And now, The Human Experiment. It's 2006, Wellesley College, baby dorm room. A young woman, Amal, has cocooned herself under the covers of her extra large twin bed comforter. She's wrapped up so tight we can't assign any of her physical attributes. We just know there's a body on the left side of her mattress. Slow my breath, don't move. She'll be here soon. But if I just keep still, maybe... Mm, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my goodness, what to wear? What to wear? Amal. Amal, stop hiding. I know you're awake. It's already past 10. Oh my God. How'd you know? Because I know you. You always trying to get out of something. Tori? I don't think I should go. I swear to God, if you don't... This is Chocolate City's last holiday party before we graduate. Like, the last. I know. It's huge. You go. I'd rather just sleep. Hey, give me back my blanket. No! Look at you. You're hiding under the covers like a baby. Amal, it's senior year. We should have fun. Chocolate City, MIT men, and we, Wellesley, eat those women, our family. We always go to the holiday. We get do up. not always How go. Would it look? We if I remember, this. I missed last year, and no one at Chocolate City blinked an eye. Because you were being a freaking pill. I don't get what's wrong. I hate these things, and you know that. And yet you insist, constantly asking me to go to a thing I don't want to go to until I say yes to get you off my back. And then the time comes around, and we go through the whole rigmarole again, for the thousandth time. You can just go. But. I like spending time with you. No, you do not. You're out there flirting and kicking it with Joe and Chris and God knows who else. I keep telling you that if you just talked, people could see how lovely you actually are. I beg you, make this end. I'm serious. You are gorgeous and smart and really funny. You've gone this entire time. Not one boyfriend or girlfriend because it can be a girlfriend if that's what's up. We're modern. Either way. You don't ever put yourself out there. I don't want to talk about this. And give me back my blanket. Thank you. You live in the Science Center, friend. Microbes won't keep you warm. Look at it like an experiment, okay? A human experiment. The first and last experiment you will helm, maybe before you leave here. Just come out with me and try to connect with someone. Anyone. I just... I want you to try it in college when you're supposed to, so you can see what happens. Please? For me? 
a mall. This is the last time I will ever ask you to come out with me. The next party that crops up, I won't say a thing. I promise. Ah, there she is, out from under her security blanket. I have nothing to wear. I don't own the right stuff. Borrow something from me. I'm bigger than you. It'll be a look. A skin tight look, a come hither look. How about this? I don't wear glitter tops, friend. Okay. What about- I have too much bounty for a halter. Jeez, okay. I have this new dress from Delia's. Ugh, a baby doll dress. And it's so short, and it's winter. And this is an experiment, Amal. Here, try it on. And if the experiment goes bad? We cannot yet predict the outcome. <laughs> Isn't that what you would say about any experiment, Miss Scientist? But if the experiment does in fact go awry, not only will I not ask you to a party ever again, I will leave tonight's party with you. I will forsake Joe and Chris and Mike and take you, the friend I love, home. All right. How do I look? So good. It's been around for me. I always gave him to Tori, and now here I am, standing in the back of this sweat box, stuffed into a baby doll dress, and wearing huge chandelier earrings that weigh my earlobes down, and these heels, four and a half inch torture traps. <sighs> okay, at least the Chocolate City boys decorated the room nice. What a name, Chocolate City. These MIT guys are so, I don't know, sometimes it's cute, sometimes it's weird. They try so hard and, but the decorations are nice. Holiday gear, oh. <laughs> They even decorated the movable whiteboards with garland and candy canes. Of course, they didn't wipe away the mathematical equations on them because this is Chocolate City, the home of the brightest, blackest men on MIT's campus. Gotta let them know. I think I recognize, um, um, Okay, there's Patrick. He's Chocolate City, and I think that guy's MIT, but not Chocolate City MIT. And that dude with the button up is definitely Harvard. And oh, is that? Oh yes, it is. Sexual chocolate. The boys from BC are always doing too much, but oof, they are cute though. Maybe I might just stay long enough to see them step, cause Mm, 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 mm. And that guy, he looks, hmm, him I can't place. Ooh, wait, wait. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be a night. Looks as if flyers for this party haven't just hit the Boston campus scene. That man right there is Dorchester, and behind him might be Metapan. <laughs> Mm, they sure are cute though. And uh, here we go. Look at everybody. Over there, they're rowing the boat. And then over there, signaling the plane. Okay, I see you. Patrick, you got a cute parachute. And those girls are dancing in a tight circle, ponding the river. And that one in the center of the dance circle is giving them a run. <laughs> Oh. Any reggae song comes on and we are always doing Sean John dances. Doesn't matter what one really. And if you can't row the boat, you better at least know how to whine. Girl, get off the wall and come out here and dance. I don't know. You promised to try, come on. Oh, Amal, look at you. If I didn't know who I was and what I preferred, I'd be all up on you. Stop it. Why can I never get my hips to do that? Your whining is like, Molasses. I feel like we all need to cover our eyes because of the indecency. <laughs> I said stop. <laughs> oh, ah, 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 I do not know how to dance to this. How do you move Girl, to this you just music? Move, hop. I don't know, just move. Excuse me, can I cut in and dance with Miss Memphis here? Sure you can. And alone again. Get back to the wall. Get back to the wall, get back to the wall. Amal, find somebody and dance. Shit. Okay, um, right, dance. 
human experiment, find a connection. Well, that man and that girl are already connecting. Really connecting. Oh, too much connecting. Those guys are dancing by themselves in a group. Mm, too much pressure, no. Oh, he's cute. Um, looks like BU. I think I saw him before. Uh, okay, kind of all alone. I can do that. Just walk up slowly and sexy and... Hi. Not hi. Don't say hi, just dance. Uh, yeah. Uh, I gotta find some... I gotta... I'm here with a friend. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, okay. Um, oh no, um, I think I gotta... I'm, I'm gonna... Where's Tori? Um, of course, she's with that dude. Um... Maybe I should go up to her and, no, she's having fun. She really wants to be here. Um, just walk, walk, head high. Nothing just happened to you and walk through the crowd, past all the canoodling and connecting and get out, get out, get out. <laughs> I hate this baby doll. I hate these heels, I hate the cold, I hate Massachusetts right now. Get me home, get me home. <sighs> Please shuttle come early before I die of hypothermia. Uh, the shuttle's not coming for an hour. Oh my god, where'd you come from? Behind you, I guess. Oh, well, okay, um, I'm fine, I can wait it out. It's cold. I know that. You coming from Chocolate City? Yeah. I know the party's not done this early. No, it's still going. You're Wesley's sister, huh? Yeah. How can you tell? You're waiting on the Wellesley shuttle. Ah. Uh, yeah. Look, I know what you're doing. You don't have to wait for me. I'm not trying to be in any kind of way, but my dorm is right around the circle. It's, it's warm in there. You can wait inside, and when it comes close to time, you can come back out here and... Get the shuttle. I can't leave you. It's like 10 degrees and you're wearing... Nothing. I am wearing <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Sorry. These heels. No problem. Slow down. All right. Here we are. Okay, just wait here in the foyer and... Can I come up? Uh, what? To my I place? I mean, um, not like... Sure, I mean, yeah, if you... Yeah. So, m my name is Jacob. Amal. And, uh, here we are. This is my place. I live alone and, uh... I apologize for how messy it is, and... It is messy. I know. I'm preparing for finals, and it's all been a nightmare. I'm in the middle of a problem set, and... I'm sorry, I'm rambling. Uh, can I get you anything? I have a mini fridge. No. I don't really drink. I have water in the fridge, too. Oh. Yes, I... I can do that. Oh, your feet must be... Let me clear off a place for you to sit. Everything's covered in clothes and textbooks and... Can I just perch right here? On the bed. Sure. I'm not... I don't think I know what's happening. Me either. I promised my friend that I would. I, I don't get it. What are you trying to say? Um, I don't really... Can we, like, roll back a sec? Yes, we can roll back. Wait, what do you mean by roll back? Why did you ask to come up here? In plain English, please. You stopped and looked at me... And I thought there was a connection, and... Okay, and what do you expect to happen now in my dorm room? I don't know. Because nothing is going to happen. Okay. Okay. Then, um, I should go. I'll wait in the foyer. No, you can stay. I just, like, we don't know each other. And I'm the type of guy who needs to get to know a girl. <laughs> 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 wow. Is what I said okay. Funny. I don't know. Oh. You're serious? Yes. Okay. Um, real talk. 
I'm in the middle of a human experiment and I'm not good at it, <laughs> obviously. And so even though there is no sex happening tonight, which is good, maybe, maybe we can get to know each other so I can bring back a story to my roommate, Tori, so I can try to stretch. Uh, okay. Um, makes sense. Makes sense. I know it doesn't make sense. Just flow with it, please. All right. I'm okay. game. I'm flowing. Thank you. Uh, let's start with basics. My name is Amal Malik. I'm a senior, Wellesley. Major is biochemistry, minor in literature, concentration in music. Do you sleep? Wait, what kind of music? Vocal? Instrumental? Can you sing? Nine years of violin, and yes, I can sing my face. Well, then sing something. <laughs> Your rules for sex are the same as my rules for singing. Gotta get to know you. <laughs> Bet. Got it. Um, so then me, right? Name, Jacob Biggs, senior, MIT, major, mechanical engineering, don't have a minor, don't have a concentration because I like to relax. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see? Easy. Okay, now you ask me something to get to know me. Name of the game, connection. Uh, okay. What are your hopes and dreams? Whoa. Really? I mean, you're the one making me do this. I don't even know how to begin to answer that. No. No, you answer that first, and then I'll answer it. Not fair. I need a second to grapple with the question and my game, my rules. <laughs> okay. I see how this is going to be. <laughs> Fine. Okay. I'm going to take this seriously, okay? Move over. Like, move over, over. I need to stretch myself out. <laughs> Close my eyes. Really find the answer. Um, You're kidding. It takes a second, but I'm more serious than not. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm going to take my time so I can tell you the truth about my hopes and dreams. Hopes and dreams. Hopes. <laughs> Hopes and dreams. I dream that one day I could work for NASA and help build rovers and shuttles. Anything that brings us into space and through the stars. And I dream I can save a little coin to get my own house, a little plot of land, and what else? A wife. Two kids. I guess a simple life, really. At its core, you know... Like, I don't want to go to space. That's not me. I want to build the vehicle for us to go. I want to aid in the exploration. And for my life, I like it to be easy and simple. I figure that's how I get the best of both worlds. Your turn. Go. Um... Okay, uh, hopes and dreams. Hey, lay back. Get comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> hopes and dreams. I'm a genius, so... <laughs> Whoa, wow. Humble much? If this is my time. I'm just making it plain. All right, cool. I hope to use my genius... I want to uncover more clues on how HIV mutates so we can design a really viable vaccine. And I want to sing a non-Western opera that I composed on stage at the Met. And I want to write, write dramas that make people cry. I want to use what I was given to make the world better. And also so that I know the limits of my own instrument or I don't know what the right word is. I want to stretch. I don't stretch a lot. I dream about stretching, and I think I have a lot to stretch with, and I want to stretch into, into myself like not just the genius, okay, but like the beauty and the sex and the body and the everything. I want to stretch in places I don't know how to stretch in yet, places that make me uncomfortable. And yeah, I dream about a husband and kids too. I always dream the kids more clearly than the husband, but I do... Oof. I don't know. That's a lot. <sighs> oh my God, why are you staring at you? And everything you said sounds doable. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, look, 
maybe you could spend the night. I meant what I said when I said no hooking up, but maybe you could stay and we could keep connecting. This is our human experiment. An experiment on how Amal and Jacob came to be friends. Yeah, sure. And who knows? It's an experiment. Okay. Okay. Next question. You just heard The Human Experiment by Mfaniso Udofia. It was directed by Logan Vaughn and featured Adepero Oduye as Amal, Alex Ubukudum as Jacob, and Kaylin Coleman as Tori. Original music is by Jimmy Keys. Hello, everybody. My name is Mfani Soudafia, and I am the playwright. Hi, everyone. I am Logan Vaughn, and I'm the director. Hi, my name is Adepero Oduye. And I play Amal. Hello, my name is Alex Ubokodom, and I play Jacob. Hey, y'all, my name is Kaylin Coleman, and I play Tori. Thanks, everybody. Mufaniso, apart from Kaylin, who's worked with Playing On Air before, you helped convene a great director and cast. What's it been like creating this together? I have worked with Logan before on many installations within the Ufot cycle, so I really know her. I know her work. I love her, and I also know how she understands the music of my work, and especially since we're working in such a short amount of time, it was really important for me to work with somebody who I know inherently understands me and the work and comes with her own vision to boot. I think she's wonderful. And then I have worked with Ada Perro with all of my psycho plays, before. I feel like she's been inside of almost all of them now. And I think she's a light and a genius. Alex and Bokunam and I went to school together. And this is a talented, talented man, both from acting and then also, I think, an incredibly stellar writer. Kaylin. Kaylin is the one who is newer to me. But from what I saw today, will not be new for long. Come <laughs> on now. <I> love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so you. Um, it's really important for me and my work to like have a family feel and this is family right now and Foniso and I have worked together and I I just I love her I adore her she's brilliant and we challenge and match each other so beautifully and I love every second I think that sometimes when you say every second people don't believe you but actually what I mean is I actually enjoy every second with her. So we always have a beautiful time and an inspired time. And it's been years now. We just love it. And Kaylin came into my life, this light, now two years ago. No, maybe almost three years ago when we worked on another incredible play with the, one of my collaborators, Stacey Rose. Kaylin is just a force and a light. And Anna Perro and I have also known each other for years have not yet had the chance to play in a proper playground, but we will. And Alex, the same. I, you know, I've just adored being able to play with you guys even for this short amount of time. And I can't wait until we are really able to stretch on the playground some more. Adepero, I read you were once pre-med and you make quite a shift to acting. What prompted you to change course? Was there a, a clear moment? You know, I don't know, typical Niger, Nigerian path I attempted to take. I went to Cornell, and I think it was around, you know, organic chemistry, where I was just like, I, this is not, this is not it. And I think, honestly, I, 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 that was a feeling that was kind of simmering when I first stepped on campus. My, basically, my father passed away uh, suddenly when I was 19. And it was like a complete wake-up call. This idea came real clear about how life is too short to do something you don't want to do. And what does it mean when you're doing something for other people? And at the time, it felt random for me. I literally sat down one day and acting was like a, it was like a voice whispered in my spirit. I don't know. 
that said acting. And I took an acting class my senior year because I had time to take classes outside of pre-med requisites. And I'd, I had no idea what it meant to be an actor, to pursue acting. But I remember when I was introducing myself, I blurted out, I am going to be an actor, having no idea what that meant. And it literally was like my life, basically, after that was like my life catching up to me saying that now in hindsight, I can connect the dots way past before then. That makes where I am sitting right now with you beautiful people um, where it makes sense. But yeah, that was kind of like the the thing that kind of cracked it open. Adapero and I are both Nijap, Nijap. Hey, well, hold on, hold on. There's, there's one more Nijap person hey, here. Well, I, I, I like the one next to is actually from my area and has right. every right right now to come at my neck. Exactly. Get it. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. For not <laughs> mentioning his name. I, so let me, let me, because he's also Nijap man proper. And it's not inside uh, this play, The Human Experiment, like out loud, like on the surface. But Amal is a Nigerian woman in this play. She's a Nigerian-American woman going to Wellesley College in the early 2000s. And that, I think, is it's a very particular experience. It's why I did ask to work with Adapero, because what it is to understand the community you're within, Wellesley College, which is a predominantly white institution, to then also know that you're inside an African-American group called ethos at Wellesley, and then to feel inside of you that there are other cultural systems at play within your body as well, things that kind of are distancing, things that you might not be able to actually vocalize when you are 20 some odd years old and just trying to figure out how to fit in. So it's there, but it's very subtextual. And a part of like my work is always centering Nigerians and Nigerian Americans. And then also inside of my work is figuring out what is the bridge into relationship with our black African American like sistren, brethren, kindred, which is why Amal is best friends with Tori from Memphis, Tennessee. That's the heartbeat of my work. It's just this time around, you don't, mm. it's not like a, a mm. story point that mm. you're digesting on the surface. But the reason why this probably felt so good to listen to is Adapero and Kaylin are sitting right inside that pocket and making the world very specific so that we can feel what that union is, what that friendship is, and then a little bit of what Amal's isolation is inside of it and how she has to find connection. Yeah, it's very beautiful. And Kaylin, you're a more recent graduate. Do you feel there's been a change in terms of being a Black student in a primarily white college in the 15 years since this play took place? Here's the thing. So I went to UPenn in Philadelphia, which is also predominantly white, and I also just graduated in 2020. One difference is that at Brown, I was in an MFA institution where our program was very, very small. So the community was just a smaller size. I think 15 years ago now, it's still something that as a Black person, you're going to have to navigate how to find yourself, your voice, how to protect yourself, how to find your joy in any predominantly white institution. And I think one of the things that I've always been blessed with is finding amazing people, grounding myself in a community. You know, while I was at Penn, I was able to be a part of sorority. So that part where it's like, eat those, like, you know, I know, I know what that, what that feels like to find a sorority, to find an arts community, to find Black people from all across the world and to lean into one another, both in the way that we are so connected through heart language and then also the way that we come from different communities and we can learn from one another and really um, support one another. So absolutely, it's still, it's still a challenge. It's going to be a challenge. And I think one of the best ways that I know how to make it through something like that is to find your people and to allow them to love you and to love them as well, you know? At the center point, the experiment is connection. And uh, two people who are in, who are very much connected, Tori and Amal, of course, as students in this institution, but of course, connected as friends, 
and as, you know, two young black women moving through this particular time in their life. And the challenge that Tori sort of places, I think, places with love and light is for a mall to just step out and attempt to connect in a new and a different way. Of course, I think what we all maybe, I hope, have experienced in our life is that sometimes when we stretch ourselves, when we walk to the edge of something, or when we step over that edge, what is possible is surrendering. When we can surrender to something new, what the, the possibilities of, of what can happen are abundantly greater than we maybe ever expected. It was wonderful having you all and seeing you make something beautiful. Thank you. You've been listening to Playing On Air, great American short plays with great American actors. Theme music by Tom Cochan. Play music by Jimmy Keys. Marketing and communications, Avon Jones. Audio editing, Rachel Creedberg. Recording and sound design, John Kilgore. Playing on Air is distributed by PRX, Public Radio Exchange. For Playing on Air, I'm your host, Claudia Catania. Thanks for listening.